Okay, my dear semi-candidates, you know I promised to call you semi-candidates always, because by next year, you are going to be candidates. And you know how uh, semi-candidates behave? One, they are always attentive, they participate when it's time for learning, then they don't allow anything that can distract them, right? Now, I am Moise Saddam, and every time you see me, just know I have brought the word of SST, or social studies. Are we there? Uh, today we are going to look at about empires, which we are going to discuss empires of East Africa, of course. We are still uh, under the political organization of the people of pre-colonial East Africa, of the people who were in East Africa before the coming of the white man. Uh, so, as I've told you, empires, we shall also know the examples of empires that were formed in East Africa, the background of some empires, and of course the factors for their expansion. Are we there? So, uh, my friends, you know we work in sessions, and I hope we are ready to have the first session. Now, friends, uh, empires of East Africa. We have been seeing about empires, kingdoms, chiefdoms since P primary three. Now, what do we mean by an empire? What is an empire, my friends? Is someone thinking? Okay, we have to confirm. Now, when we say an empire, we simply mean a large area, a large area or place that is controlled by one ruler, and that ruler is known as an emperor. Are we there? So we can say a large piece of land or a, a large area controlled by one ruler is an empire. It is also right to say that an empire is a place ruled by an emperor. Are we together? So any of the two is right. Now, friends, in East Africa, we have had three empires. Some of them are not correct empires, or they are false empires. The likes of the Zenji Empire, the likes of the Bunyochita Empire, as I told you previously. Now, I have to inform you that, my friends, we are already done with Bunyochita Empire because of the reasons I gave you. Most of the kingdoms that we discussed actually started after the collapse of Munyorochita Empire. That's why we started with it. But I uh, have to remind you that this was a legendary empire in East Africa. It was the first empire to be formed in East Africa. Are we together? Uh, Munyorochita Empire, as I told you, it can also be called a kingdom, Munyorochita Kingdom. So don't be offended when someone says Bunyorochita kingdom. It was as well a kingdom. Okay? Now, so we also have another empire that was formed in East Africa, and it was known as Nyamwezi Empire. And lastly, the Zenji Empire. Since we are done with Bunyorochita Empire, we are going to deal with these two. The Nyamwezi Empire and uh, the Zenji Empire. Now, we have to begin with Nyamwezi, then later we shall deal with Zenj Empire. Here we have to know about the historical background of the Nyamwezi, its location, and some of the prominent leaders of this great empire of East Africa. Now, <clears throat> may I have all your attention? And I want everyone to concentrate, because we have now started. Uh, Nyamwezi were called so by the coast traders. They were called so by the coast traders because they came from the west where the new moon appears from. Actually, these people who were coming from the west, the direction where the new moon appears from, were called Nyamwezi. As the word Nyamwezi simply, uh, Nyamwezi means the people of the moon. So, these early people who came to the coast of East Africa, the likes of the Arabs, 
the early people who were at the coast of East Africa, when they saw people coming from the west, they called them the Nyamwezi. Nyamwezi referring to the people of the moon. So when I say the word Nyamwezi, I'm simply saying in English that the people of the moon. So the Nyamwezi have told you were called so by the coastal traders or the coastal dwellers because they came from the west where the moon, uh, the new moon appears to rise. Are we there? Or appears from. That's the reason to why they are called Nyamwezi. Oh, that's where the name Nyamwezi originates from. Now, uh, uh, as I've told you, these people lived on the southern shores of Lake Victoria in Tanganyika. Now, someone is saying, Tanganyika, what is Tanganyika? Tanganyika actually is the former name of the present day Tanzania. So this empire was formed in Tanzania, or Tanganyika by then. So uh, the Nyamwez lived in uh, small communities headed by a chief called Ntemi. Say Ntemi, everybody, Ntemi. So Ntemi was the title given to the leaders of this empire. I need to inform you that Nyamwez empire started as a chiefdom but it was started by an ambitious young man who had a dream of ruling over a large area that is known as an empire. And of course, he had to fulfill his dream. Now, my friends, Ntemi, just like you can say, the Kabaka of Uganda, the Omkama of Toro, Omkama of Bunyoro, the Chabazingo of Usoga, etc., etc., even these people, the Nyamez, had their leader as Ntemi. So Ntemi was the title given to the head of the Nyamwez people. So I want also to emphasize that the Nyamwez lived in small communities headed by a chief. So during the time of the building of this great empire, these chiefdoms came together, came together, and they formed one, one big empire known as the Nyamwez Empire. Now, friends, what were the duties of the Ntemi, the leader? One was, to, one was to appoint officials to assist him in his work. So it was the duty of the Ntemi to appoint some person, uh, personnel to help him rule over his empire. Also, uh, he settled the difficult disputes among his subjects. Whenever people had difficult <coughs> misunderstandings, the Entemi would come in in order to promote unity and peace within his people. Also, the Entemi could lead his subjects to war. So he led his subjects to war. Remember, a long time ago, expansion was by attacking your neighborhood. So this Entemi would lead, would be actually at the front, not at the back, but at the, uh, the front to lead his subjects into war. Then he was consulted on various issues, the likes of trade, uh, religion, and so many others. So he was the top person to be consul consulted, and he would take the final decision. Also, he carried out religious ceremonies. He officiated the religious ceremonies. Remember, by that time, we had ATR. We never had the Christianity, um, Islam, and so many other religions. So he was... <coughs> He would uh, conduct the religious ceremonies uh, in his empire. He was helped by a council of elders called Wanyampara. Everybody say Wanyampara. Wanyampara. So he had a council that would help him, and it was called Wanyampara. E.G. had the priests, the rainmakers, the councillors, and the herdsmen. All of those people. We, we, uh, were known as the Wanyampara. Or they picked groups of these people to advise or to help the Ntemi to rule over the empire. Uh, there were many Nyamwez chiefdoms. There were many Nyamwez chiefdoms. So as it started as, a small, uh, as one chiefdom, they kept on adding, adding, and he would appoint people to lead different 
chiefdoms. So a time came and all these chiefdoms were put together to form a great empire known as the Nyamwezi Empire. Nyamwezi chiefs would become more powerful and join more chiefdoms into an empire. That's what I've just said. Famous rulers of the Nyamwezi uh, include, we had a man known as Chief Mirambo. We had a man known as Chief Mirambo, or you can say Mirambo. We also had the new Yamawe and many others. These were the greatest, Mirambo and new Yamawe. As you can say, the history of Uganda, we had the powerful people like Dr. Meaton, Apple Obote, Idi Amin, Dada, and so many others. So when we go to this empire, we had famous rulers, the likes of Mirambo, the likes of Nuri Yamawe, as we shall learn about them. Now, what do we have to know about Chief Mirambo? The rise of Chief Mirambo, he has a very interesting story, as we shall see. Okay, Chief Mirambo. Why are we saying Chief Mirambo, yet he ruled over an empire? This empire started as a chiefdom. Are we there? As you can see. He was one of the most famous in Temi of the Nyamwez. And actually, he was the founder of the Nyamwez Empire. Chief Mirambo was the founder of the Nyamwez Empire. He started as a ruler of a small chiefdom of Ugoi. So this empire started just as a chiefdom of Ugoi. Are we there? Then he extended his territory by raiding uh, nearby chiefdoms. So he would go and attack and fight these chiefdoms, defeats them, and brings them under his control. The man we are talking about was Chief Mirambo, who led the empire known as Mirambo Empire, and he was his founder. Uh, it is also important for my uh, children to know that Mirambo's mission was to create a large empire with wealth and military power. So that was his mission. When he was starting uh, to rule over this chiefdom of Ugoe, he had an, a mission of creating a large empire. Oh, he was an ambitious man. So he put up goals for himself. He started as a small chiefdom, but he had a, a dream of making it a big empire, and he made it. Uh, Urambo was the capital of the Mirambo. So he established his headquarters at a place known as Urambo. Are we there? It is now important, my friends, to note the capital. Of Chief Mirambo was at Urambo in Tanganyika. Are we there? And he started as a small chiefdom of Ugoe, but he had a big mission of creating a large empire. Are we together, my friends? Okay. Now, I have some guiding questions here. What name was given to the Mirambo's army? Now, this man hired machinery, or army, and it was known as the Ruga Ruga. This Ruga Ruga helped in, first of all, raiding the nearby chiefdoms in order to bring them under his control. Okay? They also raided the caravans, the traders who would pass in their land. So also it's important for my friends to know who was the founder of the Nyamwez Empire in the central Tanzania. This was Chief Mirambo, as I've said. Apart from Mirambo, mention another famous ruler of the Nyamwezi. We talked of the Nyungu, Nyungu Yamawe. Now, friends, what led to the success of Chief Mirambo? What enabled this man to create a large empire? Remember, he started just with Ugoi as a small chiefdom. But what were the reasons for the growth and expansion of Mirambo's empire? And that is Nyamwezi empire. Oh, what were the reasons for the success of this man? Well, there are quite many, <clears throat> and I have a few of them here. One, Mirambo was a hardworking and a wise ruler. He, first of all, liked what he was doing, and he was hardworking. He enjoyed to do what he was doing. He would himself lead the subjects 
into the O. When you take a trace uh, about the current leaders, you find that most of them do not lead the O. They stand behind and they give orders. But this gentleman would go himself and lead his subjects into the O. That shows that he was a very hardworking man. Secondly, he was a very ambitious man. What do I mean here? He was so determined, he was so strong about achieving his mission of creating a large empire in East Africa. So when you are ambitious, you have to set, sit down and set goals that I want to be the next Messi, and you work hard towards it. That will be you are self-motivated, you are self-driven, and you know what you want to become, and you have to work towards that. So he was very ambitious, and he had, he had to fulfill his mission of creating a large empire that he created, the Nyamwez. Also, he had a well-trained army called the Ruga Ruga. So this army was not a, uh, a permanent army. Anyone would hire this army. But he hired them, and they were called Ruga Ruga. Okay? Just like we had uh, Abatabas for Uganda, we had uh, from Kama, Omkama of Bunyoro, Abarusura. So even this gentleman had the army known as Ruga Ruga. So when we talk of Ruga Ruga, we mean the trained army of Chief Mirambo. Are we together? Now, uh, Mirambo was loved and liked by many of his subjects. Since he would appoint almost from each community someone to lead, these people loved him so much that he could not resist him. Are we there? That also promoted his, uh, contributed to his success. Also, he forced traders passing through his empire to pay taxes. He had trading, um, uh, trading routes passing via his his land, his empire. So people used to pay taxes. These taxes helped him to buy, uh, to buy weapons for defense and to pay his workers very well. He also acquired guns from Arabs. When the Arabs came to East Africa, Nyamaz, uh, Mirambo was one of those people who benefited from their coming as he got guns that he used in defense and uh, attacking their neighborhood. Also, he used new military tactics. He learned from the Ngoni and the Arabs as well. Do you still remember the Ngoni people? The last band tribe to come to East Africa, the, uh, the, the Ngoni people. These Ngoni people were fighting where they left, that was South Africa. They had very many, they got involved in very many wars. So they came here with fighting tactics or skills. Now, this uh, gentleman, Mirambo, Mirambo learned new military tactics from the Ngoni and the Arabs that he used to defeat the neighboring chiefdoms and communities, hence his expansion and growth. So these were the reasons for the success of Chief Mirambo. As a primary six student, I would, I would like you to at least pick one or two of the things that made this man a successful man. For me, I've liked this one mostly. I'm ambitious. He was very ambitious. Now from today, I'm, I'm very, very ambitious. I want to teach all my children in my class and get distinctions only. So I have to work very hard towards it. So what have you learned? Because they are men, hardworking, ambitious, he was loved. So you have to be good to your friends so that you can also be loved. He also acquired guns and he learned military tactics. So this, these were the reasons for the success of Chief Mirambo in Tanzania. So my friends, uh, I have just come here to tell you what you need to know about the Nyamwez kingdom. First, this is how the palace looked like. You can see. This was his palace. Okay. And uh, they would welcome friends or people. Then, about the Nyamwez uh, Empire, 
the leaders in Temi, that was the title given to the leaders in Temi, and the, some strong leaders we had, Mirambo, we had Nyungu Yamawe, those were the strong leaders, okay? These people taxed the traders. You can see my friends here trading. So whoever would pass in this land would pay some money or would give in some goods that helped to develop uh, the kingdom. Also, as uh, they raided their neighborhood, you can see these were the Ruga Ruga, the army, okay? They were going for a mission, raiding the neighborhood territories, and they would fulfill it. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to say thank you for your time. You have been very good children. Today, I'm not leaving you with any activity, but you can as well go through this work orally with your friend. You can share the success of Mirambo with a friend. I will give you the activity at the end of the Nyamez. Remember, we have to look uh, also about uh, Nyungu Yamawe. Are we there? Then I will leave you with an activity. I want to say stay safe, help your parents. Don't only take your time to watch TV. Be prayerful, because I told you God is the one who created you. So you have also to be good. To